workshop, an LA County Library virtual event in partnership with the LA County Museum of Art. I'm Erica, I'm a librarian at LA County Library and I'll be your host today. Before we begin, we wanted to make a quick introduction to one of our resources for parents and caregivers with one of our positive parenting librarians. So we have Rosa here. Before we get started, like Erica said, let me introduce myself and tell you a little bit about how LA County Library can support your parenting needs. My name is Rosa and I'm a positive parenting librarian with LA County Library. I have been accredited by a research-based positive parenting program to provide tips and resources to help you with your child's behavior. These tips include topics such as promoting development, cleaning up, mealtime problems, I'll be available during the program to answer questions in the chat as well as 10 minutes after the program. You can also schedule a one on one consultation with a positive parenting librarian. I will be posting the link in just a minute if you'd like to schedule a consultation with us. And you will also be able to find this link in the email that will go out after the program. Thank you so much and enjoy today's program. Thank you. Thank you so much Rosa for that wonderful information that you've shared. So continuing with today's program, exploring the theme of female artists, our librarian, Alex, will be reading the book, The Flying Girl, How Aida de Acosta Learned to Soar for Us, followed by an art activity led by LACMA, by a LACMA teaching artist, Alessa, and moderated by Carmen. Um, so Alex, go ahead. Thank you, Erica. Once again, I'll be reading The Flying Girl, How Ida de Acosta Learned to Soar by Marita Engel. And it's, uh, we're reading this with permission from Simon and Shuster. One day, a girl named Ida was strolling on a lively street in a lovely city when she glanced up and was dazzled by the sight of a huge balloon that glided as gracefully as a whale-shaped moon. Below the balloon, an airboat dangled, and inside there was a man. If that man can fly, so can I, cried Ida. All I need are some lessons and a chance to try. Ida's mother scolded, no, 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 silly girl. Don't be so bold, ay, ay, ay. No one will ever marry a girl who dares to fly. Ida had a dream now, a wild dream of soaring, and she did not care to marry anyone who thought dreams were boring. So Ida asked the man to teach her the art of airship flight. The inventor of airships, whose name was Alberto, agreed to show Ida how to start a motor and steer, turn left and turn right. Lessons on the ground weren't easy, but Ida worked hard and soon learned how to pull this lever, tug that rope, drop more ballast, believe, practice, and hope. One evening, Alberto invited Aida to an aerial dinner with tables as tall as elephants, served by waiters who walked on tilted stilts that made them look like silly giraffes. At dinner, Alberto said that his airships were meant to be chariots of peace so that people all over the world could meet one another and develop friendships by flying back and forth. When Alberto invited Ida to ride while he drove an airship, she cried, no, 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 I, 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 I won't be a passenger. I only want to be the pilot. Alberto was amazed. Ida was just a teenager and no woman or girl had ever flown before. But no one had believed Alberto's wild dream of motorized flight could come true either. Not until he invented his airship. So Alberto realized that if he, if he could fly, 
Ida could too. All she needed was courage and a chance to try. On a clear summer day, Ida finally had her thrilling chance to pull this lever, tug that rope, drop more ballast, believe, rise up, and to hope. Like a whale-shaped moon, the airship's enormous balloon soared above the busy city and out to the countryside. It sailed over green farms and cows and sheep, high above the heads of excited children who cried out, Look, look, it's a girl, and she's flying. <clears throat> From her dangling airboat, Ida smiled down at the children. But then she frowned at Alberto, who was on the road far below, frantically pedaling his bicycle and waving a handkerchief as he tried to show her which way to go. Even though she had already told him that she did not need help because she had practiced. Alberto got tangled in a thicket of trees and fell far behind. Ida kept flying high above roads and rivers, completely alone, truly free, until finally she reached her destination, a green field where swift polo ponies twirled and leaped like dancers. Ida landed skillfully, skillfully planning to watch the daring game. But down on the ground, she soon found that she could not climb out of the airboat. Her dress was too fancy. The skirt was too tight. So she wiggled while children giggled until in the end, some helpful men had to tip the boat sideways so that she could slide out. Almost gracefully, without too much of a bumpy, toppling tumble. Ida tried to watch the horses, but angry strangers surrounded her, shouting, scolding, calling names, saying she was too bold, too brave, and too different, and too strange. Girls, they hollered, should only be allowed to learn how to cook, sew, and clean. But girls, they bellowed, should never be taught how to fly huge machines. Just then, Alberto finally caught up, still pedaling his bicycle, eager to cheer her. You did it, he shouted. You flew. You're a hero, such a brave inspiration for all the girls of the world. Ida smiled. Ida laughed. Yes, yes, yes. Ay, 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 ay. She really was the first, but she was sure she would not be the last. Every child who had seen her glide so high above roads and fields was probably already singing. If that young lady can fly, so can I. All I need are some lessons and a chance to try. Sometimes, Ida said to Alberto, all it takes to change the whole world is one wild dreamer's soaring example. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed that book. Once again, it's The Flying Girl, How Ida de Costa Learned to Soar by Margarita Engel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. We appreciate that. That was a wonderful story. Um, so now we're going to switch it our gears and uh, to our arts workshop. So I'll hand it over now to our friends over at LACMA. Hi, uh, my name is Alessa and I'm a teaching artist with LACMA. And this book is actually a great introduction to our art lesson because we will be making a dream, a dream box. Um, and with us, we also have Carmen. Um, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, so my name is Carmen. I'm here to assist Alyssa in the workshop. Um, so if you have any questions or any comments, you could put them in the chat and just make sure it's uh, sent to all panelists. And I'm just here to help. Right? 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Erica, if you could give me the sharing capabilities, please. So since it is March and it is Women's History Month, we will be learning about a woman artist. Um, and so just hold tight while I share my screen. There you go. Okay, thank you. Okay, so these are the materials that we will be using. Um, hopefully you've all had a chance to get them. If not, I'll, I'll stay on this page for for just a couple of seconds to give everybody some time. Um, there was one thing I did add that wasn't included in the original materials. It's not necessary if you don't have it, you have it via help and that's tape. So if you do have tape, that's gonna be, um, that's just gonna be easier once we get to the collage making and because we're gonna be gluing stuff on top of boxes. And so it would just be really helpful if you have tape. But besides that, we just need a cardboard box. It could be any kind of box, it could be, something from Amazon, a shoe box, a shipping box, a cereal box, um, maybe some like some a box from like an electronic or something. Uh, we will also be needing a variety of paper. So that's white paper or colored construction paper. And if you have it, um, also magazines and newspapers because we will be doing some collaging on the box also. So we will be doing both 2D and 3D elements on the box. Also any kind of coloring tools. So that could be whatever you decide. I will be using markers, um, but you could go ahead and use uh, crayons or color pencils or Sharpies or anything like that. And then we do, we will need some glue to glue all of the materials onto the box and tape if you have it. And also scissors and a pencil. And the pencil is just for drawing if we wanna add some drawn elements on our box. Does anybody have any questions about the materials? before we begin. Okay. okay, so this is the artwork that we're basing our art project off of. This artist's name, her name is Alison Saar, and she's actually the daughter of another famous artist whose name is Betty Saar. And so you can already imagine growing up, she was always surrounded by art and her parents really encouraged her to become an artist. And then she's also known for a lot of her assemblage art. So assemblage art is basically when you have like a whole bunch of different pieces and objects and you put them together. And we're gonna be learning a little bit more about that in a little bit. And she also likes to focus on the topics of gender and also race. Now, before I tell you a little bit more of the backstory behind this piece, does anybody, you can either write it, you can write it in the chat. Um, does anybody wanna take a guess at what's going on? So this is like a really big sculpture. It's more, she's, this this woman is, is more than lifelike. So she's bigger than like an average person. Does anybody want to write in the chat? Um, Carmen, I'm not sure I can see the chat. So if, if there's comments, feel free to just read them out loud. For sure. Uh, maybe you want to take a look at what's happening on top of her head. What are those objects she's carrying? What does it seem like she's doing? Does anybody want to share what they think is going on? Carmen, I'm not sure if you're seeing some of the comments that are coming in, um, but there's someone said she's rowing on water. Wow, that's a good one. Um, another one said women carry the weight of the world. Wow. These are really, these are really good options. Yes. So she actually is rowing. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So basically, this was inspired by the great Mississippi River flood of 1927. And it affected, I think, a little bit over half a million people. And a third of those people were actually African Americans. And so this flood happened at a time where like the income difference between black people and white people was already so big. And this flood just made it 10 times worse and there wasn't a lot of help for them. And so she was inspired by this flood. Um, and since she is a woman artist and she likes to represent that, she chose to represent um, the struggle of those people through this female figure. Um, and that comment that said it was the women carrying the weight of the world, right? This is, this is basically what's happening in this assemblage art. So, that's why she has all of those things carrying um, on top of her head. 
And then that stick, she's rowing herself out of that flood. Those are really good comments. Does anybody have any questions about this artwork or any other comments before we move on? Um, just to go along with the piece, another person said that it kind of looks like a homemaking thing. So like the pots, the wash bin, the chair. Um, so they definitely get that element of like homemaking, which was traditionally what women were uh, put into like their category. Um, but yes. yeah, so the homemaking aspect. Yep, that's that's a very good point. So it definitely like kind of plays into the the women's stereotypes. So that's a great comment. Um, there's another question. Um, they're asking why did the artist choose not to have her clothed? That's a really interesting question. Sometimes I feel like when when you're in when you don't have clothing, clothing serves as like a form of protection. So maybe it's showing how vulnerable either women were or how vulnerable the people were in the flood. But that's that's a good question. Okay, let's move on. So these are just a couple of quick art vocabulary words that we will be actually doing both of those today. So the difference between collages and assemblage. So collage art is a technique when you use multiple pieces of paper. So some of the papers that we're going to be using today, like newspaper and magazines and colored pencils to make art. So usually an artist would choose an idea or a theme, and then you start gluing all the papers down. And sometimes if you want to get fancy, sometimes artists can use fabric or photographs. And so usually collage art is 2D art, right? So that's art that's just flat since you're using paper, which is also 2D. And then the difference with assemblage is that assemblage is an art, is an art form of sculpture that is made out of found objects and they're carefully placed and put together so that it forms an art piece. So we just saw an example of that in the previous slide. And artists usually find these objects either on the side of the road or in secondhand stores, vintage stores, and sometimes even in the trash. And this is an example of 3D art. So in today's project, we're gonna be able to put both of those together because not only will be, we'll be using a box, which in and of itself, it's already 3D. We will also be doing some paper sculpting techniques, which will turn paper into 3D but we're also going to be using the newspapers and the magazines to maybe like cut out some inspiration and that gives you the 2D element. Does anybody have any questions on collages or assemblage before we move on? No. Okay. Cool. All right, so now talking about dreams, right? So this goes back to the book that was just read. And Ida had a lot of dreams. And in the beginning, she was told she couldn't do it. But then by the end of the by the end of the story, everybody supported her. So what are some dreams that you have? Now, maybe do you want to go traveling? Do you want to see the world? Is there a specific country that you want to visit? Or do you want to be an artist, a doctor, a lawyer, a soccer player, maybe a basketball player? I know baseball is really popular in LA, so maybe you want to be a baseball player. Um, feel free to write it in the chat, whatever dreams you have. Maybe you want a new house, a new car. Um, if you're having trouble thinking of a dream, because I think like sometimes that's, that's hard to think of some things, um, maybe it could be like a goal that you have. So since it was kind of just the new year, do you have any new year's resolutions? We have a, a participant saying that they um, their dream is to be a singer, which I think is amazing. That's very cool. artistic. Yeah, fits with the art theme. Does anybody else want to share? What are some dreams? We have another one saying that they dream to go to Mars. So okay. that's amazing because we just got a, just yeah. a robot on Mars. So yeah. definitely going in that direction. <laughs> and I hope you get it. You get there. <laughs> Right. The first person on Mars. That'd be cool. Oh, to open an art studio. Oh, that's kind of one of my dreams, too, actually. That'd be cool. A lot of the times we have um, very parallel dreams, which are amazing. Mm, yeah. Oh, um, someone's dream is to ride a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> They're wow, five that years would be really cool, yeah. <laughs> 
to ride a unicorn or to ride Pegasus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, to have a pet. Oh, yeah. that's a great dream. Pets bring so much happiness. Yeah, I know Alyssa has a dog, so. <laughs> I do, yeah. He's my world. Yeah. All right. Carmen and Alyssa, some, there are other participants that sent uh, messages privately to me. So someone says, I want to be an architect and design my home and live with my sister. Wow. That's great. An architect. Yeah. And then someone else wrote, they want to be president. Dream big. Go. Yeah. Go. Go big or go home. That's a great dream to have. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. So for now, just um, start brainstorming of what your dream is. And then we are going to create our own dream box. So we're going to have a place to put all of these dreams inside and we're going to decorate the outside of the box with things that either inspire you or more things that are related to this dream or this goal that you have. Um, and Erica, if you could go ahead and highlight my desk, please. As we wait, we have a couple other dreams that came in. Um, as long as uh, one said to have a pet, but another one is to have a white and fluffy pet puppy. So oh. specifically, um, and another one's to be an animal doctor, to be a veterinarian. Or something. Wow, that's, that's that amazing. Was yeah, that was actually one of my first career choices back in like second grade. I swore I wanted to be a vet and clearly I'm not, <laughs> but that's, that's a good job. That's a great job. Um, is it spotlighted on the desk? I'm not sure. No, not yet. I'm happy. Okay. No worries. So while we wait for, for the, the technical issues to be resolved. If you have um, a cardboard box that has either words on it or colors on it, you can go ahead and just start um, either choose white paper or colored construction paper. And you could just go ahead and start covering um, the whole box. That way we don't see any words or we don't see any colors. I'm gonna be using this box. Um, it had like some light electronic in it. And so since it has like words and stuff, I'm just gonna go ahead and start um, covering the box with white paper. That way we have a clean slate, but you don't have to do it with white paper. You could go ahead and do it with a colored paper if you have it, or if you don't have a solid color, you could even color it with newspapers. I think that would give it like a really cool, a really cool design for the background. You just have like a bunch of printed words. Oh, there we are. Awesome. Thank you. So, and this is where the tape comes in handy. Um, just taping it to the box. But again, if you don't have tape, no worries. I would just suggest using the glue stick and you could just put like a little bit of glue on the corners and then you could just keep wrapping the paper around until you run out and then just pick up another sheet of paper. Um, and I think I saw maybe somebody earlier said that they don't have magazines. If you don't have a magazine, that's okay, you can use um, newspapers or maybe even like those those coupons that always come in the mail. And if you don't have any of that, that's okay too. Um, the only reason I suggested for the magazines and the newspapers is um, that part is gonna be like the collage part. So if you do have magazines, you could like flip through it. And if if your dream was to be like the, the animal doctor, maybe you could find images of doctors on it or animals. Um, somebody's dream was to go to Mars, right? And maybe maybe if you, for some reason, there's like a planet on there or maybe an astronaut or a ship, you could cut it out and, and glue it. But if you don't have magazines, what you could do is you could either write the words on white paper or colored construction paper, or you could also draw it, right? So if, if you're in the drawing mood, you could draw it on the white paper and then just color it and then cut it out and then glue it on your dream box. So I am almost done covering my box. If we have another dream that's, oh, oh no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it was just, uh, we have another one saying that their dream is to have an iPad. And I know that like magazines have a lot of electronics. So if your dream is to have a specific electronic or a phone, then you could definitely cut them out or even draw them out like on a white piece of paper, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. 
once you have everything covered, um, I would suggest first starting with the the collage part. Um, so remember, this project is going to be both 2D and 3D. So I would suggest we start with the 2D part first, right, which is all the paper stuff. And then at the end, or like in the last like 10, 15 minutes, I'll show you all some paper sculpting techniques that you could um, make and then you could glue it on onto your box to fill in all those spaces that weren't able to be filled during um, with the collage. And then so I some dreams that I have, I think, hmm, maybe traveling the world, maybe to keep doing art, staying healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and start flipping through the magazine and seeing if I find anything. Oh, look, and right away, I already found a picture of Oh, somewhere in Mexico. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rip it and start cutting, and then you could start gluing. Now, when we do collage, it doesn't have it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you don't even have scissors, you could just go ahead. You see how like I ripped the page? You could also just rip the image out of there. Well, I. I should also mention that you should also keep in mind um, where the lid to your box is. So for example, my lid is at the very top. So I wanna make sure I'm not gluing this opening part because we wanna make sure the box is still functional. So that way at the end of this, you have a box that's decorated on the outside. And then anytime you have a dream, you could like write it down or you could even draw it and then you could just stick it in the box. And then it's kind of a place to put all your dreams, right? So you wanna make sure we're not um, closing that part off because then it wouldn't we wouldn't be able to put our dreams inside. Carmen, do you, do you have any dreams you would like to share? Yeah, most definitely. I have a dream to open up sort of like a community center in South Central where I live. Um, in order for like sort of like a community center, like a place called home. Um, where kids could go and uh, learn how to garden and do homework and just have a safe space. So that's like my ultimate like career goal. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I would love to travel the world. Um, just like that's you, so like, nice. I saw like, a, yeah, like uh, I would love to go to Rome because um, my favorite or my Disney movie, Lizzie McGuire, I really like. So they go to Rome and I kind of like that. <laughs> I love um, that. Movie. Yeah. Like, I really like that. And then I also dream to buy a car soon. So that's also another like material dream that I like. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely have a lot of dreams um, and hopefully some come true. <laughs> yeah. They, they, all sound, they all sound doable. Once you have um, a couple of images printed out, I would suggest using, hmm, can't seem to find it now. Um, glue stick, if you have it. I can't seem to find the glue stick, so I'm just gonna use liquid glue. If you are using liquid glue, make sure you don't use too much. So what I like to do is I just put like, I do like a really thin line around the borders and then like an X in the center. And then I kind of just move it all around. That way it doesn't create like any like weird bubbles. Because if you put too, too much glue, especially what happens and especially if you're using like magazine paper or newspapers, the paper gets too wet and then it looks all bubbly. So I'm gonna start, there we go, and it wraps around. Does anybody want to share in the chat if they found any cool pictures related to their dreams? Or is somebody having difficulties?
And remember to go all the way in the back too. So I know we have a tendency of sometimes just like looking at things from, from one side, but since it's, this is a box and it's a 3D element, we wanna make sure a lot of the sides are covered, not just this front part. So we have a question asking if they can't find anything on a newspaper, can they draw their favorite dream or something? Oh yeah, of course. So if you can't find anything in the newspaper or in the magazines, you could draw it if you're feeling up to drawing. If you're not feeling up to drawing, you could also just write it. Maybe you could write it with colors. That way it makes your dream box nice and colorful. But yeah, if you can't find anything, feel free to draw or write. Or oh, you could use the words in the newspaper to make your own words, right? Like cutting them out, like collaging it. Um, or if you see something as you're flipping through, um, just rip it out so you could save it to put it like on, directly on top of your dream box when everything's finished. You could also, so yeah, so use words, use numbers, um, yeah. or images of shapes or symbols. Symbols are very important as well, um, right? So like if you wanna be a doctor, you could, um, Use a symbol of like a stethoscope, right? Um, but yeah, that's what I found. Yep. Thank you, Carmen. That's a really good point. I completely forgot about using words from magazines and newspapers. But yeah, that, that would be a really cool way. And that way we could just have like a bunch of words collage. Symbols also very important. I found an image of a dog. So that person who wanted to be a vet, this would have been perfect for you. But I'll go ahead and, and use it as inspiration too. And I really like the idea of the dream box, um, like starting it off young, like I know we have a lot of uh, young participants because your dreams change over time, right? Like right now you want to be, uh, you want to go to Mars, right? But maybe you want to go to Pluto or go into space, you know, like dreams could always change, which is amazing. So you can reflect back onto this box um, as things like I definitely had the, like I had a dream of being a, a crime scene investigator because I love crime shows showing up. Yeah. Um, and clearly I'm not doing that. I'm doing um, like in the education realm, but definitely your dreams change, but that doesn't mean that you uh, lose them. You know, so I love this kind of like keepsake that you get from a box or that you design your own box very early on, right? And it's And it's not just for like the young ones. Anyone could do it. So like if um, adults are along with their children there, you could do a box too. Like, what do you dream, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's funny that you say that because I also, in back in middle school, I wanted to be a, a forensic scientist, but clearly I'm not <laughs> anything, doing anything involving the sciences, but yeah. If I would have had like this box growing up, that would have been really cool to look back on it. So maybe as you start getting your dreams and you start writing them down, maybe it would be a good idea to even like write the date down really quick. So that way, when you do finally open the dream box, you could see all these kind of different dreams that you had and you could actually tell how old were you, how old you were. Yeah, just like you measure like your height on like the edge of a wall or something. Um, yeah, it's sort of like growing up where your dreams change or they develop, right? You might get more specific into what your dream is. Um, like we have people pacing about space, right? And I feel like that's definitely where the science realm is going right now. So um, going to space is definitely a possibility. Like I believe in that, you know? Yeah. Um, people want something like iPhones, you know? Like you could definitely cut on an iPhone or draw an iPhone, right? The color that you want and more iPhones are going to come out. So later down the line, you might get an iPhone better than all our iPhones right now, you know? <laughs> so things change, things develop, and it's amazing. Very true. Yeah, because a hundred years ago, going to space would definitely be like one of those dreams that probably wasn't going to happen in your lifetime. But if you're dreaming about that now, that's that's definitely doable. Yeah, we could learn from our friend from the book whose dream was to fly, right? And everyone was telling her like, you can't fly because of this and that, right? Um, but they were still able to do it, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
I think the the little girl from the book, Ida, she would have gotten along really well with with our artists that we learned about today. Both dreaming big. Most definitely. <laughs> I'm also going, starting to do um, some like material things. So a laptop, I'm in desperate need of a new laptop. So I'm putting that on my dream box. Hopefully it comes true sometime soon. Um, so yeah, so your dreams don't only have to be like about your profession or about something that you want to accomplish. It could also just be like getting a new laptop. Like somebody said earlier, um, getting a new iPhone. Right, so those are all really fair dreams. Found a picture of a sunflower. So does anybody want to share in the chat maybe what they've been able to find so far since it's been like 10 minutes? Or is, are we still having trouble finding things? Oh, somebody's saying I'm pasting pictures about space. That's cool. I'm really surprised you were able to find um, space images. Lucky you. Somebody's dream is to move. That's a good dream. Like, is it move cities, move states, or just move houses? And there's a lot of different symbols that we could use for moving, right? So like just a, a box itself, right? Like that symbolizes that you're packing up, you're moving, or a suitcase. If you are like moving countries, if that's your dream, then like an airplane, right? Oh yeah. So there's definitely that's different that's symbols that we could we could use or think of or we could interpret differently. So everything that you put, it's like what you interpret as your dream, right? Or even to have moving, yeah. Yeah. Or even like something super simple, just like an arrow. If you want to get really, really simple, you could also just do an arrow. Um, I think I'm just going to find a couple of more things to start collaging and then after that we're going to move. Kind of like the light. So something like this I could just leave white. Um, but we really just want to make sure we're getting the large areas covered. And then that way we can fill in all the empty spaces with the 3D elements. Seeing a lot of pictures of food making me hungry. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody said that they wanted to be a president, right? So this would have been a good image, a past president. Some inspiration. I like that you mentioned the food aspect because I think a lot of the times goals and dreams are very um, correlated, uh, like they're very connected. So like your goal might be to like make your own food at home, right? But your dream um, could be like to develop and to gain all this knowledge about how to cook, right? Because sometimes yeah. you don't have to cook. <laughs> so definitely like you could put food there, like something that you want to make, right? Um, that you inspired. I always wanted to make Ratatouille after like seeing Ratatouille in the movie. I was like, I think that looks amazing. Looks really cool, right? So we could get inspired by our like books and movies on, and develop our dreams like that. Right. And this actually reminds me of like another dream that I had is to eventually have my own garden with fruits and veggies and herbs. 
That way I don't have to go to the store. I could just go to my backyard and pick out whatever I need. But obviously before I have that, I would need, I would need a garden <laughs> or I would need some kind of backyard because I don't really have that space now. So that could be another dream, right? So in order for me to achieve my dream of having a garden, it also goes hand in hand with needing a house or needing just a lot of a lot of space. So that could be another dream, right? Because sometimes to have one dream, we need a we need another dream to help us out. I love that you mentioned that for sure. Like the person who wants to go to Mars, right? Um, it starts off with getting accepted to like a really awesome like space program or going to space camp. You know, it's like a those little baby steps in order for you to 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 test out your dream like what do you actually want to do you know or what do you want to make like there's always baby steps in order to get to those dreams and goals so even if you might not complete one specific thing right to complete a dream like oh i don't have a garden now but like exactly like lissa said it's like oh maybe like move move houses or start like a planner box or something small in order for you to just have like a step up on your dreams right Oh, we have one that um, she would like to be a princess and live in a castle. That's really awesome. Like, you can buy yourself a castle, you know? You can. That's totally doable. Or, yeah, you know? I love that dream. Okay. Okay, so by now we should have most of the empty spaces filled in. I'm just gonna add yeah, some grapes from my garden. <laughs> Is done. So now we're going to move on to the 3D portion. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of clear my area. So I'm done using the magazines. I'm done using the newspaper. Um, and I think I'm going to start using some construction paper. So there are several ways that we could go about doing um, like different sculpting techniques with paper. And I'm going to show you all some and then you can decide what you want to make with them. So if you want to make some like fringes, so this could either be decorative, so we could just finish um, decorating the box. So whatever, you, whatever 3D element you decide to add to it, it doesn't necessarily have to be about your dream now since we were able to collage that. Um, it could just be like just purely for decorative purposes to fill in the space, or you could actually make something out of it too. So it's really your choice. Um, one of the ways to decorate would be to create kind of like little, little fringes and you start with just a rectangle and then very carefully, you just start making little slits, but you don't go all the way through, right? So all the slits are still staying together and you just keep going and going. Now, if you want to use this to decorate, you could do, you could do it out of any color and maybe you could glue it on the sides. If you want to incorporate this into your dream, this actually looks like something that we see in real life. Every single day, we should see this. Does anybody want to write in the chat and guess what this looks like? I'll turn it over in just a second. Maybe that. Oh, somebody said grass. Yeah, awesome. Right, so this looks like grass. So maybe if your dream was to have a garden like me or to move to a bigger house or to travel to a place that has a lot of grass, you could go ahead and use this technique. And then if you want, you can also just kind of like move these little slits to give it like some kind of movement. That way it's not just all standing up straight. And remember the trick is not to go all the way through because if you go all the way through, it's just gonna cut that little strip. And I'm going to actually use this as grass since my dream is to have my own garden. I'm going to go ahead and start gluing that at the bottom. And so you can create as many as you want to fill up all the white spaces. Okay. 
Um, another technique, if you want to do some like little swirls or spirals, is you cut a little strip. Um, and this one you should be careful with. If you have an adult with you, I would I would suggest that they do this for you. If not, um, so I'll show you the one without scissors. So if you want to do like a spiral, not using the scissors, you could just wrap it around your finger and kind of like press down with your other hand. And then you're left with a little spiral that maybe you could stick to the top or to the side. Kind of looks like confetti. Um, and if you are using the scissors, you again, you cut a strip and then using one of the scissor blades, you hold it against it. Oh, and it just ripped. You might need a, a longer strip of paper since I got kind of like a medium strip. There you go. And then you have like little swirls. What else can you do? You can also um, create tabs. So if you want to do anything that's like sticking up, all you have to do is create a little tab on the paper. And then you have somewhere that you could glue it. So you would put the glue down here and then you would glue it on the box and then you could draw something on here or you can make a shape out of this. So you could do really anything you want. Just as long as you have that tab, it gives you like an easy place to glue to. Um, somebody said, can I color on the sides? Can I color on the sides too? Yeah, of course. So you wanna make sure your box is kind of like decorated all around. That way when your box is standing up and if you walk around it, that way it's decorated on all sides. Another technique that we could do to kind of like put all of these together is you could do hmm, to make a tree. So to make a tree, you kind of need kind of like a, a rectangle and then you do the fringes on the top. So this would make it look like a palm tree actually. We want to make sure we're going all the way across and making sure our fringes kind of end at the same point. And then we move it around. And then at the bottom, we're going to create those tabs that I talked about to make it easy to glue. And the tabs want to make sure they're short and they're wide, right? So they're different from the fringes. And then we could do a little circle. I'm going to use tape since it's a little bit easier. And then once you have it taped, you can go ahead and start opening up those tabs. So you just fold the back. And then you open up the fringe. And you just created a tree. So now you could glue this tree anywhere. If you want, you could glue it like on the side and that way, well, that kind of looks like an arm now. <laughs> or you could also just glue it on the top and have like a palm tree sitting on top. You could just glue it anywhere you want. Um, some other cool things that you could add to this, if you know how to do origami, um, that would be like a really cool addition to it. So I know some people know how to do like origami frogs. So if you're the one, if you're the, the one that's dream is to be a vet, that would be something you could do like an origami frog or like a dog. Um, I know actually how to make a boat. So that kind of goes hand in hand with the traveling. Or if you know how to make a paper airplane, that would be really cool if um, if you want to travel, but also if you're, if you're the one that wants to go to Mars, you could just make a paper airplane and pretend it's like a rocket ship or something, and then just glue it on your box. Carmen, do you know how to make any origami? Um, like for 
Yeah, I think I do when I was a kid. I'm not sure if I well, definitely step by step. Like I would look up the steps, so that would be perfect for anyone who wants to participate in Alyssa's origami aspect. Um, you could just look it up. I feel like there's definitely you could use the internet to um, look up. Like that's what I used to do. I did like a giraffe out of like dollar bills. I like leaving them around the house. So I would like ask my dad for like a whole bunch of single dollars, and then would make little origamis and leave them around the house. That's so cool. definitely like look it up on the internet. Um, if you don't know how to spell something, also you could ask us, or you could um, look it up on the internet as well. But yeah, definitely, I love doing origami when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. When when I was a kid, I knew I had a lot of these memorized. Like I could make the one with the frog that you could jump. Like you would press on the back of the frog, and it would just like jump over. And I knew how to make that for memory, but I definitely don't remember how to make that now. <laughs> um. So if you if you are following along and you want to make the boat, you could just start off with a rectangle. Um, I just cut a smaller piece, but you could just use like a large sheet of um, computer paper. And what I did is I folded it in half like a hamburger. And then I folded it in half this way again, just to create that crease. I open it back up and then I get each corner and then I fold it to that crease that I just need. And I do the same thing to the other side. So you're left with something that looks like this. And then at the bottom, you should have two flaps. So we're going to fold one of the flaps forward, flip it around, fold it on the other side. And it's kind of hard to see. There we go. And so now you have kind of like the shape that looks like a hat, which actually if maybe your dream was to own a hat. You could keep it like this, but you could to make the ship you would open it up this way and you just want to like tuck these little sheets of paper in and do the same thing on this side so now you're left with something it's like a square but just keep it like in a diamond shape and then you pick up one flap fold it forward do the same thing on the other side and now we open it back up again so now you're left with a tiny diamond and then these two flaps, kind of looks like a fortune cookie now. Um, you open it up and you have a boat. So then you could just glue it on here. I love that, Alyssa. It definitely unlocks the memories from like middle school. Yeah. <laughs> like little boats. And like if, there, if it rained, we would put them in the water and they would go down. Yeah. Um, we also have a lot of panelists and um, participants that know how to do a lot of work on me. Someone says they know how to do a dog or those like fortune tellers where you would write like numbers and you would pick like, I think they would call it, like cootie catchers. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. The four thing. The four <laughs> corners. Yeah. yeah. And you would, like say the numbers. Yeah. Nice. The fortune tellers. Awesome. Oh, somebody said I know how to make a dog. Wow. That's cool. I feel like that one has a lot of steps. Um, Erica, I think we're wrapping up now. I don't know if you have some final comments. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And a special thank you to our friends at LACMA for leading us in that amazing art workshop. We hope you enjoyed the program. If you would like to let us know how we did in this program, please fill out the survey that we will that will be sent out to all the participants at the end. Our next creative storytelling workshop will be on March 19th and we'll explore the art of another amazing female artist and feature an art activity and reading of the book, Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney Artist Extraordinaire. To register uh, for that event and to check out all the full schedule of the creative storytelling workshops, visit lacountylibrary.org forward slash LACMA program. There you will also find a book list about the themes presented in each workshop. Our positive parenting librarian will remain in the event for 10 minutes after this, the conclusion of this program. If you have any parenting questions you would like to post in the chat, you can also schedule a one on one consultation with a positive parenting librarian and we will post the link to schedule a consultation in the chat again. And if you're interested in participating in more of our upcoming virtual programs, please visit us at LACountyLibrary.org. Again, thank you to the LACMA teaching artists. We appreciate uh, everything that you, you taught us today.
Awesome. Thank you so much. It was it was great to be a part of this. Thank you, everybody. Equally, thank you for letting me participate in this. And for your dream box, just write down your dreams, put them in. You can look through them. You could take them out. You could put them back in. You could always change your mind, you know? So I like that you have an aspect to, to dream big. Mm -hmm.